This video is brought to you by Alienware, featuring Intel Core i7 processors. Start gaming. Live streaming is a really big thing now. People love watching streams as well as streaming themselves, and a lot of new people might want to start streaming but have no real idea where to begin. I'm going to help out with a really basic guide on how to start streaming from scratch. We'll download OBS, go through the settings and even set up a little overlay. Firstly, if you're going to be streaming and playing games and have a smooth experience, you're going to need a decent system to do it on. In today's video, I'll be using the new Alienware X51, a small form factor gaming system that's perfect for streaming games like CSGO, League of Legends, BF4 and much much more. In here we've got a liquid cooled i7-6700K processor, a GTX 960 graphics card, 16 gig of DDR4 memory and two hard drives. This will give us solid performance at 1080p and allow us to stream at 720 at the same time without losing a load of performance. Alienware sponsored this system for me and if you want to learn more about it there's a link down in the description below. If you don't have a system like this you can still stream though. I'd recommend a modern Intel or AMD quad core processor, something like an i5-2500K or equivalent would be my personal minimum. Your graphics card isn't really important as much as your CPU because streaming is a CPU intensive process although I'd still recommend having say a GTX 670 or above. Okay step one, head over to the OBS website obsproject.com which is a completely free program we'll be using and it's the best option in my opinion. Click on the big green button on the left side under get OBS that says Windows 7, 8 and 10. There is a multi-platform version that's just been added but for now we'll be using the standard version. You'll also need a plugin called the CLR browser but thankfully the OBS version we just downloaded comes with it bundled in so we don't have to worry about downloading anything extra. Run the installer and it will do everything for you automatically. Once it's done, run OBS and we can start to get into the program itself. We first want to change certain settings before we do anything else. Head up to settings and then settings again. We're going to change a few things in here. Go to encoding on the left and here we can set the bitrate that we're going to stream at. This depends really on how fast your internet and CPU are. If you've got a really slow upload speed then you might struggle to get a consistent stream but if you've got a fast upload speed you can pretty much set this to whatever you want within some limits. Again depending on how good your CPU is. Twitch officially doesn't want anyone streaming at beyond a 3500 bit rate so that's really your maximum but bear in mind that if you're not partnered then you'll have no quality options and setting your bit rate too high could cause buffering for some people watching with poor internet. Initially I'd try setting it between 2000 and 3500, 2000 is ok quality, 3500 is probably the best that you're going to get. And also consider your internet upload speed too, I think a minimum of 3 Mbps is probably required. Back to OBS, at the top you'll see an encoder selection. Default is x264 which basically means that you're using the power of your processor to run the stream. In the interest of keeping this simple we'll be sticking to that for now but just so you know there are a few other options available for you down the line. Make sure use CBR and enable CBR padding are checked, I won't go into too much detail about what they do but essentially they ensure your bitrate is consistent throughout the stream which is what you want. Leave the audio part as default, we've got no need to change anything there. Once that's done move down to broadcast settings, make sure the mode is set to live stream although it should be by default anyway and set your streaming service to what you plan on using, most likely it's going to be Twitch. Set your FMS URL to a location closest to you. The only other thing you need on this section is your stream key. You get that by heading to your Twitch dashboard and clicking the stream key link. It will pop up with a message giving you your stream key which will be a long alphanumeric code. That goes in the stream key box and that's what tells Twitch that you're streaming and links it to your account. For obvious reasons I can't show you my unique key and you should make sure that you never show yours to anyone else. You can however get a new key if something like that does happen. You might also notice some red writing here which looks pretty scary, simply hit the optimize button in the bottom left and it will set what it needs to for Twitch automatically without us having to worry about it. Next we move on to the video settings, here your base resolution will be your native monitor resolution, for most people that's probably going to be 1080p or 1920 by 1080 but set this to whatever your native resolution is. Then most people will downscale their resolution to 720 and change the FPS to 60, especially if you're playing fast moving games. 
Maybe if you're streaming Hearthstone or something fairly stationary, you could leave it at 1080p and 30fps. I play most FPS games, so I will set it to 720p and 60fps. I really think this looks the best on Twitch. Again, if your CPU is struggling, you might want to drop it down to 30fps. Audio is really simple, just leave them both at default unless you're using an audio device that isn't your default, in which case you'll need to select them directly from the list. There are some more advanced settings you can change that will make the stream either more or less intensive on your CPU and as a result make the quality of your stream either better or worse, but with this being a basic setup guide we're going to leave the advanced settings at their default values. To be honest, they're already pretty good. Okay, so now we're literally ready to stream. If you hit start stream right now, you'll be live on your Twitch channel but well we wouldn't exactly be streaming much would we because we haven't set anything up yet let's add a basic game to our main scene and to do that it's really simple i've now got csgo running in the background so all i need to do is right click add game capture give it a name like csgo for example and then select csgo in the list also make sure stretch image to fit screen is selected Preview the stream so we can check everything's worked out and boom, it's added to my scene and it will pick up everything I do. We check the stretch to fit stream button because if you're playing CSGO at a different resolution to your normal setup like a lot of CSGO players do, it will ensure that it fits the size of the stream. Now then, we're almost set, but I'm sure you've seen most people streaming have fancy overlays and maybe, hey, you want one as well. Well, let's sort that out for you. Thankfully, as we talked about earlier, the plugin we need to get this working is all bundled with the OBS installer, so we don't need to do anything special. There are several different websites that offer overlay services like T-Notifier, Twitch Alerts, but we're going to be using a really cool website called Strexum to grab an overlay and add it to our stream. It's very simple and it looks great. Head over to the Strexum website at strexum.tv. It will ask you to connect your Twitch account, so do that. If you're already logged into Twitch, it will connect automatically. Once you're connected, it will prompt you to pick a free overlay. Have a look through the options and grab one that you like. There are purchasable overlays on the marketplace as well if you want to have a look at those. Once you've picked an overlay, you can then mess about with it to your heart's content. Move things, add things, change the position of things, add follower sounds, subscriber sounds, donation sounds, all that good stuff. There's a great amount of functionality here, so spend some time making it look exactly how you want. Once you've nailed it, you simply copy the unique link at the top of the page and take that into OBS. To do this, right click into the right pane, hit add, CLR browser plugin, choose a name and then paste in the unique URL. Just make sure the dimensions are set to 1920 by 1080 and you're good to go. That overlay will now be there whenever you stream. You can also of course add in a webcam if you've got one simply by right clicking, adding a video capture device and selecting your webcam from the list. The more you use OBS and all the plugins and programs, the more you'll get used to them. They are quite simple. And now you're ready to put yourself out there into the jungle. That is Twitch TV. If you want to see how your stream looks, you can just hit preview and see it in action. So there we have it. I hope this helped. And just remember that everyone who started streaming had to start somewhere. They started with nothing. So if you're going to start doing it, just be brave, give it a go, be consistent. And why not? You've got nothing to lose. As always, thank you for watching guys. If you've got any questions about OBS or streaming, let me know down in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, thumbs down if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next one.